Hello, my name is Nitai. I'm the head chef of the call office. Today we're going to do a um, recipe for our challah, challah bread. It's a classic uh, Jewish uh, bread. Usually we serve it on Friday evenings only in the call office and the call office industry. Um, and today I will show you what's, well, how to do it. Then you can do it and take it to any other direction that you want uh, according to the holidays. Here's the equipment that you will need. So a mixer with a dough hook. Um, the mixer is uh, very important. I'm not using uh, here something very big scale, a homemade style. And if you don't have a mixer, we can do it also by hand. Uh, it just takes a little bit more uh, time and it's very satisfying to work on these uh, breads uh, with the hands. You will also need a um, scale. This is what we use in a restaurant. If you have any other uh, scale like this one that is up to uh, three kilos, it will be perfect. I'm gonna use, and this is very important when you're uh, working with bread, a, a scraper, a plastic scraper. This allows you to work inside of the mixing bowl or inside of a plastic box and a metallic uh, scraper that this will allow me to cut the dough um, before I shape it. For the bread, to start, we will need uh, ice water, cold water, eggs and oil. Try to find an, as most uh, natural uh, flavor oil. Olive oil is not needed. Then fine salt, sugar, fresh yeast, if you cannot find fresh yeast, dry yeast is good, and we will write the, how to change the, uh, the scale and the, the, the weight of them. We have eggs, and then you can see that we have here a few items that are as the garnish. We, in the call office, we use black and white sesame, cowway seeds, then a mixture of seeds, pumpkin, sunflower, and linen. We have a bit of uh, za'atar, that is our, uh, we use it a lot in uh, our style of cuisine. And sea salt, just to have a bit of a crunch on the salt. First of all, I put all my liquids on the bottom of the uh, mixing bowl. I add the water, then the oil and the egg, already mixed together. Then, in the flour mixing bowl, in one side I put the salt, the other side I will put the sugar and I will put the fresh yeast that I use. Again, this is something that we use mainly in restaurants. I'll put it next to the sugar. If do you use um, dry yeast that is more common, mix them with the water for a couple of minutes, stir them with a fork until they are dissolved. And then in the dry, you will have only the flour, sugar and salt. So what we do is very simple. We have the liquids, we have the dry, we just put it on top and then straight into the mixer. Hook. Now, it takes time to, to, to see and, to, uh, and a bit of experience to understand what you really want, but we're gonna do it in two steps. First step, I'm gonna start with low speed for three to four minutes. This allows to the whole, ingre to the whole ingredients to kinda uh, connect. The water and the flour are now uh, touching each other, mixing, and the first reaction is beginning. After the first three minutes on a low speed, I'm gonna switch it to second speed not extremely fast, I don't, know, I don't want to tear up the, the dough, just want it to give it a, a structure, and we do this for five minutes. It's important, never leave your uh, mixer alone and go away. Have a look, it depends, each country have a different flour. I'm using um, French flour, T55, but it's the equivalent of a strong uh, flour or bread flour. And if you do bread at home, you know what is the best uh, type of flour for you. Um, and again, a bit of experience to see. Sometimes it will need a little bit more water. So don't be afraid to put a little bit. You don't want with challah a super sticky dough. You want a dough that is very uh, easy to handle, easy to work with. 
end. During the process, you will understand also we are not going to work the dough too much. And another matter, if you do it um, by hand and not with a machine, make a big whale of flour with the salt and the sugar and add all the liquids into the middle. Don't add all of them in one go. Try to do it in uh, two or three steps when you're adding the liquid and work on that. In the beginning, it's, you can use a mixing bowl and to kind of make a little well inside. Mix it even with a spoon until it's a bit uh, all uh, together and, are, and then start knitting that uh, on the countertop. Um, the knitting by hand, it's a process of about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a great activity with the whole family or with the kids. So kind of create a certain uh, excitement around that. So we finished the um, two uh, speeds, three minutes on uh, speed one, and then five minutes on speed two. We can see that the dough is already very homogen. It's uh, nice, it's not sticking to the ball, it's kind of disconnected. And uh, from that point of view, we're gonna finish by kneading on the table two minutes, and then we're gonna keep it. The next process is to start the self-rising of the dough. Um, what we're gonna do, there's a lot of recipes that telling you kind of to take the gaz out or to use the hand. I'm doing a, a little bit of a different method. We're gonna fold it every 20 minutes. I'll put the bowl, let it rest. So after 20 minutes, um, the dough is still not super rised and it's fine. What I'm gonna do is to give it this fold. So scrape it with a plastic one, pop it on the table, and then very simply, again, not overworking it, just gonna connect kind of the dots to a certain envelope, do the same on the back, flip. Again, what I'm looking for is a very smooth uh, surface. And then I will do the same fold again in 20 minutes. Okay, so we had our second fold and we waited after that another 20 to 30 minutes. And our uh, dough is ready to start cutting. Then we're gonna pre-shape and then we're gonna shape it to the challah uh, form. So the dough, this uh, recipe is for two big challahs. I will try to do two different shapes to kind of make it a bit interesting. And it's around 1,400 grams of uh, dough. So both of them will do around uh, 700. So I have my scale, I have my scraper, a bit of flour, metal uh, cutter, and our lovely, lovely challah dough. A bit of flour on the bottom, a little bit of flour on top, and you can see that the dough is rested, is not too elastic, is not too pushing, but uh, we can start doing. So with a little scale, I'm just gonna cut it. The first challah that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a challah of 200 grams each braid, three braids. So that will be around 600 grams, and then the rest will do four braids, like a, a square shape. So always try to cut it if you don't have a metal scraper, you can use a knife, uh, any, any kind of big knife that you can handle that. And again, the first one we'll do for 200 grams. Put it on the side. We need to remember that every time that we cut the dough or man any mani manipulation that we're doing on the dough, that's mean that it's kind of a trauma to the dough. So we need to let it rest a little bit. It's, all the doughs are quite the same in that uh, philosophy. If it's a pasta dough or if it's a bread dough, you need to give it some rest every time that we're doing. So this is my three of 200. And then I will see how much I got left. I have 800 and a bit. So I will do again 200 of each times four will allow me a beautiful four braided uh, challah. And to be honest, you can use everything that you want. If you will feel like a bit more in the holiday uh, and you want to put uh, dry fruits, you can put in the mix or kind of to decorate. Um, if you do put it inside of the mix, we add in the last minute after we mixed everything. We just add something 
if it's uh, raisins in uh, in cognac or in a liquor or if you want some uh, nuts again always in the end so we cut it and we have 200 the rest I will just spread it around so this is the first step second step that we're gonna do is the pre-shaping and we give it around 20 to 30 minutes to sit down and relax again just to let the dough kind of relax and have a bit more soft and texture like this we can work if you see that your dough is when you touch it is going back again that means it's too elastic and give it give it a time you don't want to make it dry but um, for that reason you can put a cloth or a cling film just to kind of not have this crust and dry uh, texture on top of it and now we're gonna start the main shaping. We had the pre-shape, now we're doing the shape of the chala. So before that I did two rounds and closed the dough. Now I'm gonna do another close. I'm using my thumb and my hand. With my thumb I kind of push the dough inside. With the rest of my hand I close it. Again, not too strong. The whole idea is to give inside of it a good structure and you will see it that you have kind of a rolling uh, shape inside. I close that, make sure that it's neat. I have kind of a line. The line is quite important to know where it is. In Chala, because we have a lot of uh, topping on, on top of it, it's important, not extremely. And I'm starting to open it to a snake. I don't want a lot of flour. And this one is the three braided one. I like to make it a little bit pointy and to have a little bit of uh, depth in the middle. The what we're doing, we have the three braids. Even if they are not extremely on the same size, it's fine and we can work with. So first one to that direction, second one. I'm doing like a little X around, I let myself a 90% of the braid and I just do a little dump here. The third one is coming in the middle. This is the top one. And then what I do, I start from my right hand and I take the right braid and put it between, in the middle. Take the left one, again in the middle. It's quite simple and repetitive. The one in the right, put it in the middle. The one on the left, middle, and over and over again. Then, to finish the opening end, I take the one in the middle, move it on the bottom, and the right one on the bottom, on the bottom, on the bottom. It's the same movement. So it's not the, that difficult. And then I have the chala. What we're doing in the call office, we kind of knit it a little bit more and we're closing with the hands to a pointy tips the chala. That's it. We can move to the second chala. Four braids chala. Do the same action. Close it. Start to snake shape it. This one, I will want it a little bit bigger or longer than the three braids. We have our four braids and now is the fun part. What are we gonna do? This technique I learned from one of my chefs that she used to do it at home and I really like it so we kinda give it. So you have two braids, the third one, put it in the middle then you cross over only one. Then you take the second one and you put it on the bottom of the other one. So you have like a four braid X. Then what you do, the one that is facing me that start on the bottom, I will use this movement and then I just grab one move it to the left. Then the other one, 
the middle one will move again to the left and then same with the other one same with that so here I already have a certain structure a pattern of the khala then I will do the opposite I will start with this one move it to the other side same with the others try to tuck the other braids closer to each other and then I'm going to go to the other side to the first move take this one put it underneath take this one underneath again and you already can see what I'm aiming for and then and then I'm just going to close it down underneath underneath and then the magic is just to kind of tuck everything down and make it around this is a more more festive kind of khala it's something that you will see usually in holidays not every week and the uh, beautiful I love this shape it's a bit more thick in the middle and gonna you can do like a beautiful sandwiches with that try a sandwich a khala sandwich is amazing and that again we're gonna move it to the our tray and next step gonna be an egg wash for that the egg take one fresh egg I don't use cream or uh, milk but I use a bit of sea salt whisk it very good what we're doing in the call office with our challah we use two or three times egg wash before we put all the garnish it's allow us to have a thicker and kind of sweeter crust on the bread try to cover the whole challah especially the sides imagine that the bread is gonna become bigger and bigger so we let the khalas uh, after the first egg wash to rise a little bit so we can see that after 20 30 minutes they're already in a size that I can put them in the oven I'll just put another time a bit of an egg wash then I will start with a bit of Maldon salt sea salt you can use whatever you want Atlantic salt not too much not too much just a few kind of crystals to give it to give it another crispy part and then the rest of the decoration is really up to you if you want it with fresh uh, herbs sage and rosemary is perfect if you want it um, a bit of more sweet maybe some candied orange this one I think that we can do it like more on the black and white with the long one I'll use the three uh, seeds but again <clears throat> it's very open to your interpretation what you like so this is ready to go into the oven we're gonna put it in a preheated oven on 180 Celsius degrees um, in my oven I have few functions that I can uh, put humidity and choose how many fans I want if you don't have it and it's a household uh, oven try to put a container with water or uh, ice just to have a bit of steam in the oven in every bread that you do in the at, at, at home when you have steam this will give you this beautiful crust and crust mean more flavors to the bread so don't be shy throw some ice cubes or just a, a big uh, a container with water and let it steam up so this is our big bread oven Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, joining me in the master class about Chala. Hope, you, hope that you will have a beautiful uh, holiday period. And uh, if you try uh, to do the Chala with any other 
flavors that you want to add, show us, email us, and uh, please share with us. And uh, remember just to break the challah and then share it with everybody. Thank you very much.